not too long ago, I was um, praying about something that we were doing as a family. We were taking a huge step of faith together. It wasn't the first time, it's not going to be the last. But for whatever reason, this step of faith seemed huge. <laughs> it seemed too big. And for a long time, I would just like follow Richard around the house or when we'd go on long walks and I'd say, you know, babe, how are we going to do this? Did you think about this? And almost like a lead investigator on some kind of story, I, I was just trying to get the details out of him and trying to nail it all down. And you know, this was a dream of faith. This was something that we were doing together, but it just seemed too big. I'd lay awake at night and I'd crunch numbers in my head. I'd lay awake at night just staring at the ceiling and thinking, you know what, is this possible? Last week I pulled out some old journals and I started reading through them. And one day I, I was looking at the top and there were some prayer requests written at the top of this journal. This journal was eight years old. And suddenly, <laughs> written across the top as a prayer request, was the very thing that was unfolding in our life right now. This was something, this is something, that we've been praying about for over eight years. And suddenly I realized that what I was doing, hammering Richard, asking about the details, laying awake at nights, that I was worrying murmuring, complaining about an answered prayer request. That I was so fixed on the obstacles that I hadn't for one moment considered that God was answering a prayer that we had prayed as a family for eight years. And you know, I, I think about that. It, it completely changed my perspective. The next day, Richard came, um, to the kitchen table and and we were talking and he started to tell me some of the things that I was going to be doing that day again to unfold this dream and I looked at him and I said you know I know that seems big hon but this is an answered prayer and if God is answering this prayer then he's in it and we're good and I am so excited that we are taking this adventure together and I know he had to like look around and think whoa Where'd Susie go? <laughs> where, where did my wife go? But see, that is who I am. Normally, I would jump in with both feet. Normally, I would be celebrating the answered prayer. But instead, I was so fixated on the challenges I had that I almost missed being able to celebrate. It changed everything. It changed um, Richard's outlook, it changed my outlook. And those obstacles and challenges haven't gone away. But when I look at this as an answered prayer, it does change everything. Now listen, some of you have been praying for some things for a long time. Some of you are praying for that child to come to his faith, or you're praying for that one to return home, that child to return home. And for your relationship to heal. And can I tell you something? That that is not going to be without its challenges. Relationships will need to be healed. New paths will need to be carved. Uh, there's going to be hard conversations taking place and, and maybe some gentle boundaries that are put in place and healing that needs to happen. Maybe you've been praying for your marriage for a long time and all of a sudden, you're having to work through those hard places and you're not seeing that it's an answered prayer. You're just seeing those hard places. But what if you begin to celebrate the fact that God was allowing those conversations to take place, that he was bringing you to that place where healing could begin and opening those wounds again with his help, with his insight so that healing can begin. What if God is like with us, um, opening a door to a dream that you've had for a long time and suddenly there's a learning curve or you realize that you don't feel as equipped as you want to are we going to look at the obstacles or are we going to begin to dance in delight that the 
prayer that we've been praying is unfolding. And if God can answer a prayer, then he'll be with us through the obstacles. I was in Exodus chapter, I believe 14, yeah, this week. And I was reading about the Israelites and they had been underneath the heavy hand of the Egyptian rulers and authorities for a long time. They were slaves. They were making brick out of straw. And in chapter 14 of Exodus, uh, a long generation's prayer was being answered and they were leaving. They had packed up and thousands upon thousands of Israelites had stepped out from underneath the bondage of, of the Pharaoh and of Egypt and they were now walking into freedom. They were walking free and suddenly they look back and they see Pharaoh's men coming after them. Now little, listen, we're not going to make that seem little. That's huge. It's real and it is scary. But they looked back and they saw that and they began to cry out and murmur, kind of like I was doing, just kind of pelting Moses over and over again. Did you just bring us out here into the wilderness to build our own coffin? Did we just come out here to die? And Moses, and I don't know if he's crying out to God because he's scared as well. I don't think it is. I think he's crying out on their behalf. He cries out to God and says, Lord, <laughs> help us. And I love uh, God's answer in verse 15. He says to them, why? He says to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Just tell them to keep moving. That planted in my heart. It showed me that in those places where answered prayer is unfolding and we come to those obstacles that seem really big, that he tells us, listen guys, just keep going. I've brought you out of that. I'm answering that prayer. I'm unfolding that in your life. Just keep going. They had no idea the Red Sea was going to open. They had no idea that manna was going to fall from the sky. They had no idea what continued answered prayers would look like. But the instruction to them was to keep moving. For those of you who've been joining me on my blog this week, we are believing big when we feel small. And we've been talking about some things that we want to just kind of shed or, or, or clear away the clutter so that we begin to settle into what faith looks like. And what is faith? Faith is it believing in something or someone bigger than ourselves. I believe in someone bigger than me. In this new adventure that Richard and I have, um, he's stepping away from security. We, for uh, many, many years, uh, just lived out of our comfort zone and, and tightly. And for the last couple of years, we kind of settled into a place of comfort. And I should have known that I wasn't going to stay there long. But we're stepping out again into a place to where um, we're going to have to depend on faith for almost everything. And yet, my perspective has changed. I'm celebrating this answered prayer. I don't know where it's going to take me. And I'm not so much worried about that because I know who I'm walking with. I'm Susie Eller. I'm with Proverbs 31 Ministries. My blog is at SuzanneEller.com. I pray that you'll come join us in this Believing Big When You Feel Small faith adventure that we are having at my blog. And I can't wait to see and read what you have to say today. Uh, go back to the blog today. If you have missed any of these uh, just mini teachings, go back to the blog at SuzanneEller.com and share your comments. Read these and my prayers that they encourage your faith. They're taken from a book, and I'm just going to show this briefly. Come with me. Discovering the Beauty of Following Where Jesus Leads. It is just a glimpse of what it means to follow Jesus in this area of faith, believing big when you feel small. So thanks for joining me today. And I want to leave you with just a practical thought. I want to challenge you today. If you've been in a place of angst and complaining, 
because something good is happening, but there's hard attached to it. Would you consider celebrating the answered prayer in your life and allowing God to shift your perspective because if he's the one unfolding the prayer, you are not alone. So I'll see you next week and I'll see you on the blog. Bye guys.